Michael Maguire has named his 20-man squad for the State of Origin opener. Up the blues, baby. You already know. Uh, so I'll just rail, <laughs> off the, I'll rail off the squad 1 to 20 here uh, because we hear a lot of things that I think we said eh, on this show. But yep. So we'll go Dylan Edwards, Brian Toor, Stephen Crichton, Joseph Sawley, Zach Lomax, Jerome Luai, Nico Hines, uh, Jake Dubrovich, Reese Robson, Payne Haas, Liam Martin, Angus Crichton, Cam McInnes, Isaiah Yo, Hamole Olukwatu, Spencer Lenu, Hudson Young, Matt Burden, Luke Carey, and Mitch Barnett is the 20. We got a lot right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm pretty proud of uh, you guys for doing. You guys for doing. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you happy, are you, are you happy Bro, with your I'm, team? I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty happy. I, I, I like the team a lot. Obviously, Queensland classic cowardness, not like. Oh, 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 don't oh, be well. like that, man. Don't oh, be like that. It's already started, eh? <laughs> yeah. Right, no, but what do you guys think about some of these obviously big calls that he's made? Yeah, I think the the most notable one, obviously, Reese Robson, uh, Robson, sorry, uh, and Uppy not in the team. Um, I think that's a that's a that's a big call. I think Uppy's been doing some really good things, but if if you go through that 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 starting thirteen. It's a it's a big team. It, it's strong. It's it's um. They they most probably been the informed players, and it's most probably a, a, a Michael Maguire side. And and I think we had pretty much similar names to to, to what he was thinking. Again, worked alongside Madge and know how he thinks when it comes to these big games. And you know, we look at their bench and they got bigger bodies. And Spencer Lee knew we didn't have him in our team, but you know, you could chuck him in there. He's, he's strong. You got Homoli who. Has been outstanding for the Seagulls. Hudson Young finds himself on the bench, and I think you know Luai uh, been great leading the Panthers around the last couple of weeks without Nathan Cleary in there, and been doing some great things. Could love to see what him and Nico Hines can do. Obviously, there's some injury clouds around these guys as well, so there's some replacements in there. Cleary, I think he deserves to be mentioned and being around in that group because um, everyone's informed that he's picked, and they are the players playing in the right positions, but. I'm just happy to see Dylan Edwards in there. Uh, that's, oh. I guess we've we've been pushing for him. I know we did a shout out to the bro, and the bro didn't even see it. But that's all good. Guys. Um, you deserve your position, and yeah, I even tagged the bro, but nothing. No, nothing. But all good, guys. Um, you go hard because now it's your opportunity to carve up. And I think he's been solid through the Panthers for for how long he's been there, um, and, and is a safe and an Origin player. Yeah, I'll take that one for our team that we did pick Dylan Edwards and we championed him. For a couple of weeks, and uh, a lot of the other mock selection teams that were out there had yeah. another fullback in, but yeah, we got that one right, which is uh, good for us. We'll take that one. <laughs> us Kiwis over here. And that's it. Just doing what it's worth. No, what do we know? You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, the big one for me is uh, Robson for Curacao. I thought Curacao has been great in a depleted team of form and confidence. I think he's really tried hard to spark the Tigers every single week. He's got the added responsibility of kicking goals as well as getting the team around. And Rob, Reese Robson will do a great job for them, no doubt. Um, really happy for Jake Trebojevic and he gets his chance mm. to be a leader, be the captain of the side. He's uh, been trusted with that. He does some strange things sometimes, Madge, with his leadership groups and his captains and has some... Uh, Far out, unexpected selections as far as who he picks as captain. Going back to when Dallin was young and he picked him yep. as captain for the Kiwis on the tour of England and did a great job. So uh, no doubt Jake, Jake Trevojevic will do that again. But uh, a couple of other ones, Spencer Lenew, uh been a bit of a surprise because he hasn't played a lot. Mm. But he brings that punch. He brings that punch and that power and that energy and enthusiasm off the bench that you need in origin. And uh, especially against a side that's uh, going to go full out to punch the Blues in the mouth. So they'll need somebody to combat some of that. Um, it's a dangerous team. It's still a very, very mm. dangerous team. We can't take it for granted. I, I'm not sure if Isaiah Yo will still start. They've named Cam McInnes, and that could be a, a little bit of trickery there from Michael Maguire just to name Cam McInnes there. But I'm sure the experience of Isaiah Yo in the big, big arenas will start that game. I think you've got to give um, Mitch Barnett a shout out too. Sorry, yeah, Mitch Barnett too. He's been um, enormous for the last year and a half at the Warriors, and he kept in the side yesterday against the Dolphins. Depleted everyone out. Eleven, eleven players on the sidelines. Eight of them are starting NRL players and would start every single week. 
but he's been enormous. And he's an origin player. He's tough. I don't know if you fellas saw his um, interview after the game with uh, the, uh, with the boys over in Aussie on Fox. Like he was so serious around just like he just looked like he wanted to like hurt someone. And he was talking about obviously the perform like the Warriors' performance, but he was straight down the line. He had that steel look about him that, geez, he, you know, you put him in a t- in a team, he's not going to let you down. So a massive um, shout out to Mitch Barnett. I think he's been enormous for the Warriors and doing some really good things as well. Well, he's been named at twenty. Yeah, he's, he's named as number twenty in the squad. I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a bench spot. Because on that bench, there's only him and Spencer and you are the out-and-out middles. Yep. And I think you need two punchy middles on the bench, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him take one of those spots. I know there's, there was a couple of questions about our selections too last week, about having <laughs> no um, backs on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> no backs on the bench, and I think it's much really similar again. Uh, you know what I mean? I think Madge, if you look through their team, and I think we said this as well, if you look through the team, there's people that can fill into those positions if a back goes down. Um, but I do like, obviously, Joseph Soaliti out there, Zach Lomax, Stephen Crichton, big jumpers, uh, big jumpers for the ball. I think they're going to have to combat someone like Xavier Coates and Cobbo, who I think maybe that's where the, the Queensland team goes. Uh, we won't know till later this evening uh, when their team gets named, but... I definitely think those two boys are going to be there or thereabouts. So you're going to need someone like Suali and, and Lomax and also Crichton to be getting up and challenging because Tor's on one side and then Lomax on the other. Can't wait to see them compete. They've for the also ball. got an injury cloud over Nico Hines. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll wait for him over the next week and a half to put him on ice and, and try and get him ready. But if he's not to play, I dare say they'll go with Burton. And if they have Burton and Law, they've got two big kickers on the ball mm-hmm. too. Only pop, are they, but they're both left left footers, aren't both they? Both left footers, yeah. So um, we'll see which way do they go. Be interesting. I got one question for the two of you guys. So it's a, been a pretty big thing in obviously Australian media that they everyone's saying, man, how are they not going to pick Latrell Mitchell? How are they not going to pick him? I'm pretty sure two months ago we said <laughs> the bro had ruled himself out. He was sticking with the Rabbitohs. Did they just not see that or something? Like, I, and I understand he's a great player, but at yeah. the same time, Stephen Crichton and Joseph Suali uh, inform as anyone in in the NRL. Well, they've, they've been the two best New South Wales centers, I think. Uh, and Madge has gone for guys that are in form, which he normally does. Um, he's gone for strike power as well. Yes, Latrell Mitchell uh, demands defenders to make tackles. Less Latrell Mitchell's a big figure in the game of rugby league and also for New South Wales and done some great things. Um, but I think he's been on a bit of a journey this year with his form and also trying to find out about himself a little bit too because he's had some moments in games that he want to take back. Um, again, you know, South Sydney have been under the pump and a lot of those players at South Sydney will most be looking within to make sure that they get themselves ready first. Does he warrant selection? You'd have to ask him. I, from from what I've seen, I don't think he's he's ready to go to that next level just as yet because I think first and foremost you want to focus on your club land, get that right, get your form right, get your head right. And then go be able to perform. I'm not saying that this is this is a three three. There's three games. There's three games. He could be back in there. Game two, game three. You never know. Injuries injuries occur, and he will not let you down if he's in the New South Wales Sky Blue jersey. So a strength of Queensland's always been loyalty. They've been loyal to the guys that have been successful, and with the exception of a couple of selections in the last couple of years. But in the main, they've they've had some combinations. And a team that stuck together for generations through. New South Wales have tried that, but haven't had the same success. So they've had to chop and change. I don't think they can show loyalty on this occasion to Latrell because his form doesn't warrant it. These two in front of him, and maybe Bradman Best, if he was fit, mm. it's probably in front of him as well. So there's probably a couple of other people, hence why we went with this selection as well. I mean, we said for a couple of weeks, Michael Maguire will go for a team on form. And this is the team on form. He's going to find some form with South Sydney in order to get himself back in the calculations. Yeah, for sure. So that's exciting stuff. The Blues team for Origin named. Uh, we'll get on to the Queensland team when they do name it later today. We'll try and figure out what we can uh, do for that uh, and get back to you guys. <laughs> Just before we head into breaking. the next game, there's some breaking. That's what happens when you film oh, on a Monday, go. I guess. The <laughs> Queensland uh, squad has been named. Oh, uh, Billy yo. Slater has dropped his squad. So I'll Let's read, go. I'll Let's read go. the 1 to 20 right now. Uh, we've got Reese Walsh, 
Xavier Coates, Val Holmes, yep. uh, Tabuai Fido, Murray Taolungi, yep. Tom Dearden, uh, Daly Cherry Evans, Ruben Cotter, Ben Hunt, Lindsay Collins, Jaden Sawyer, and Jeremiah Nano. Ooh, Yo, strong oh, cars. Pat Carrigan, Harry Grant, Moaki Fotoeka, Jermaine Hopgood, Selwyn Cobbo on the last spot on the bench, uh, Kalfusi 18, Brendan Piakura 19, and Ezra Mam 20. No but, David Fafita there. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. No. You know, it, well, again, you know, when you look over that squad, man, that's a, that's a strong squad. And any of those names that we've just spoken about, Re, David Fafita, and Hopgood, will get a job done. Um, Brendan Piakura, for me, been outstanding. <laughs> Young Cook Islander, doing big things at the Brisbane Broncos, and has making that back row his position this year at the Broncos. So a massive ups to him because he's been putting in a work. He runs good lines. I know he's it's in an extended squad. Um, but it's it's a strong squad. I guess he's gone with the safety of Reese Walsh, Xavier Coates, Val Holmes, Hamaso and Murray Tolangi, who's done the job previously. And I think there's there's no doubt that those guys are our first choice picks for for Billy Slade when it comes to the team because they've done the job before. They've got a great connection up there. And then obviously Tom Dearden, we said, you know, him and Ezra Mann will be in and around that squad and they've gone for Dearden, like we said, hasn't hasn't done anything wrong, done the job before. I guess the surprise for me is the Ben Hunt start with Harry Grant sitting on the bench. I think both players can get a job done. Harry Grant's been at the nine down the storm. But again, they play that role uh, where they just mix it up. They, someone stays on a little bit longer. They go, he comes onto the bench or comes off the bench, starts the nine, and, and they play him as a ball player through the middle. So exciting team. Well, what a team. I, I love the back rowers. Hey, we picked that. <laughs> I, I love, love the pack. Love those, I love those back rowers. Love that pack. It's tough. Paddy Carrigan, Jeremiah Nanai has been solid. J- Jaden Sua deserves it, um, yeah. being huge. Loves the contact. He's made for origin. Um, but if you look through their team, you know, Lindsay Collins been enormous for Queensland uh, and the Roosters and what he carries. And then if you watch that Cowboys game, Ribbon Cotter, beast. Yeah. He was playing in the middle of the park and, and went, after, went after the Tigers up there. And he's played centre before as well, so he can play everywhere, Ribbon Cotter. Yeah. And this is what happens when uh, you put on that maroon jersey. Yeah, <laughs> you just know what job you got to do, and whatever Billy asks you to do, put you out at centre. We lose somebody, play out of position. They just grow another league, and, and this team, um, very very happy with it. They've decided to go with Tolangi instead of Cobo. Fine, tried and trusted, mm. been there before, knows what what the arena demands. Cobo, he's going to be around it. Brendan Piracura, he's. Uh, is becoming the modern day axe, and the axe was Trevor Gilmister, who was known for his low tackling and just used to chop people in half. That's a real mark of his game. There aren't many low tacklers in the no. game anymore, no. but he's bringing that back and he's, he bangs people, runs hard, works hard. Not the biggest back rower out there, but big in, inside his jersey. He's big in his heart and how he plays. So he's built for this. He'll be great if he's given an opportunity, but if not, he gets to be around camp with his Ramam. Soak it all up, learn what the Origin Arena is like, what the build up's like to be in the inner sanctum, and learn from those guys that have been there like Cherry Evans forever and a day. But whatever happens in Billy, we trust. Yeah, well, and you look at, if you look at their, their, their bench compared to the New South Wales team, a little bit different too. Yeah. You know, a couple of, couple of front rowers and a nine. Uh, Reese Robinson's got to be playing full 90, 480. Uh, but then you look like Sal and Cobbe, they've got a guy on the bench who's much recovering just in case someone gets injured. Mm. Uh, through the training week as well, Felice Kafusi, the old stage, he's still, he's still there, he's still got it, um, he's strong. But yeah, a, a complete different bench to what we see in the New South Wales. So, But a lot of these players on the Queensland bench fit into their positions. So when you look at the New South Wales and you compare it, and like we said earlier, a lot of back rowers... Um, but they're going to have to be moving some of their starting players into position if something happens. So, yeah, I like both teams. I think it's going to be a massive uh, a massive series And when it comes to the, the origin, so I'm excited, looking forward to this. We've spoken about the little man coming back into the game and how dangerous he can be, and I think that's a tactic that they'll use with Harry Grant. We've seen it before in origin when he's come on and he's exposed some tiring big middlemen and got out of dummy half and turned the game, scored some tries out of dummy half coming in this arena, I think that'll be a tactic that uh, Billy Slater will use with leaving him on the bench until he sees some fatigue setting into the New South Wales defenders. Get out there and do your thing, son. Oh, we should just touch on it because I'm sure everyone will be speaking about it. David Fafita, why why do you guys reckon he isn't in this team? 
Oh, I think if you look at the, the back rowers that they have, powerful. Um, and I think when we spoke about it pre, pre this, the naming coming out, we spoke about the stints that he can offer off the bench. But if you look through through their, their side, their side and those those two back rows that they have, their starting back rows, their 80 minute back rowers. Um, so you're looking for, you know, I guess 15 to 20 minutes from someone like Fafita off the bench. You've got guys like Jamin Hopgood, who Jermaine Hopgood, who's gonna be there, he's gonna be through the middle of the pack. A lot of those guys are gonna be carrying being being front rowers and helping out there. So I just think he's gone for for back rowers that are going to give him like defensively strong, defensively strong back rowers. I think when you think about a Billy Slater team, they're defensively strong because he's come out of his defence system uh, down at the Melbourne Storms and he, he focuses on defence and everything else comes off the back of that. So I'm guessing he's seen some, uh, I think some inefficiencies around for feeder and his defensive movements maybe. Um, and he's gone for Jaden Sue and Jermaine. Jeremiah, sorry, um, in the back row, and I think you know they'll get a job done. He could be still there about if something falls out. I guess he, he's there or there about. If they have to bring someone in. Well, they've got Fotuweka and Hopgood on the bench, who are two middles, and he looks like he's he's happy with that. He's got Cobo, who's going to cover the backs if anything's needed. So he's got some faith that Sua and Nanai were going to play eighty, mm. and they're eighty-minute players, and that's what he's after. I think. Players that can play in the back row do a job for the duration of the match and stay out there rather than putting on someone for that 15-minute spurt and then come off. It'll be a good 15 minutes, but he's got some faith that these guys will do that over the course of the 80 minutes. His rotation importance is on the middles, and that looks like where he's gone. So, yeah, um, what, I'm again, I'm disappointed for is... Uh, Dan Gagai misses out again yeah. on another series. And uh, these guys got the job done last year. Yeah. They've got Billy, Billy Slater's faith in them. So for that alone, I'll stick with you again. And Billy, we trust. Very exciting. Our first breaking segment. That was, uh, that was yeah, awesome. Nice. I just saw it pop up on uh, my little laptop. Good well, thing I have this here, eh? Yeah, well done, Ephraim. Um, we'll do nice. a proper, an even more in-depth, I'm sure, pre-game next week. 